I'm here today to take you on a little journey. It starts in Guangzhou in China, and it ends in Giritsrit in Bavaria. However, we're not embarking on a holiday, but rather taking the road of textiles. About three years ago, and I remember it as if it were yesterday, I was standing in Hong Kong's business district, somewhere in a glass box office on the 25th floor, talking to a fashion manager of an environmental NGO about my ideas on alternative textile production. After all, she smiled at me pitifully and said, dream on, girl. Well, so I dreamt on. My vision is to reintegrate textile waste into an existing textile chain. So how is this possible? For me, I'm highly motivated in repurposing things, things that seem to be needlessly discarded. And so to speak, finding ways and breathing new lives into existing objects through creative intervention. There will always be textile waste, so I believe that we will always need new ideas how to integrate these. So my aim was to enable an existing company to recycle their own textile waste. And looking at this from a different perspective, for example with food, as for a chef, in order to create a delicious dish, it is a question or a matter of choosing the right, right ingredients. And for me as a designer, it's similar because I also have to source the right raw material. And as a dish should be tasteful and healthy and at best even have an appealing presentation, textiles too should be appealing, but at the same time always have the aim of minimal waste. Like we also should eat up our dinner or food and not wait, just throw it in the bin. I think in modern times, as for designers, we are hardly limited by using the materials. However, our raw materials are becoming increasingly limited. And this is why I believe that we should use waste material as a starting point for any creative works. So for my creative work, I used a material which is made out of wool because it's by nature recyclable and also regrowing. So the raw material I would like to introduce to you today is called salvages. Salvages are loose ribbons, as you can see, who are produced along the conventional weaving process. And so in order to reintegrate those materials again into the textile chain, an alternative production method is required. So my exploration started around two years ago in this rooftop chamber during my master thesis because I was curious to find out the evolution from a material as a raw state into a useful product in the end. So around two years ago, I joined the Textile Research Institute, which is equipped with a machine that enabled me to fuse the loose ribbons into a stable surface. And what sounded easy was actually quite hard, because I needed a lot of persuasive and persistence power. Because not only did I have to enable or to convince, kind of, so to speak, the machine to deal with this new material, but also that I have to persuade the predominantly male technicians to accept my idea. And you might imagine what took more persistence. <laughs> However, I believed in the idea and the visual result convinced me because it was a transformation from this loose ribbons into a complex fabric. And even the technicians in the end <laughs> accepted my ideas and they're still cooperating with us today. So I think I succeeded in this. So the result was kind of a water painting, like an aquarelle of a fabric. And so instead of looking at this lovely screen here, let's change perspective and look on the ground. On this floor, you see the red round rug, which at every TED talk is the trademark and also just the rug on stage. Most of you guys have probably never thought about these rugs. And maybe today you happen to notice that this rug isn't particularly round, neither is it really red. It's more a mixed shape of red tones. However, it is unique, and it's handmade by myself. And I think... <laughs> 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 
And I think it's important because it's telling its own story, because it exists when it shouldn't. It's made out of material that is usually disposed. And by lying here, it gets a second chance to show its beauty. Nowadays, materials, I think, are kind of an interface between us individuals and our surroundings. And this is why they have a physically, emotionally, and also socially impact. A rug, for instance, is usually a symbol of well-being, of comfort, unless you're standing in front of so many people. <laughs> but <laughs> I think we should consider that even though it might not interact with us as much as clothing, that it still can lead to an intimate relationship. And as a conclusion, coming back to my beginning with the comparison to food, I wonder why we are so concerned nowadays about the products we put into our bodies, food-wise, organic food, all these sorts of things, but we don't pay too much attention about how the materials that touch us, that surround us, are made out of. For me, this is a really important question, because I believe in a design approach that integrates textile waste and other materials into the production chain. So, in this sense, it can stimulate creativity and also provide possibilities for an alternative consumption. So, what started for me as a vision has now become reality. And I think as a good, small, a good news, a small good news story can change the way we see things. I'm really hoping that this little story about this rug can change the way you do see things. Thank you. <laughs>